This is Coombe Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It might look, be a little bit echoey in here. It is echoey. Why? Did you do it on purpose? Well, it's my new office, isn't it? And I just feel that... How do you get rid of an echo? Do we need a rug in here? Dunno. Um, why, why do you still call it Barry's office? Do I? You went, yeah, we'll do it in Baz's office. It's because it's always been his office, isn't it? I think even however long I'm here, it's always going to be Baz's office. Do you know what I mean? Well, ap so. apologies if you are struggling with the echo, but there's... Really? Been, are you really going to struggle with the echo? I don't know. We'll see. Um, been busy today, haven't you? Mate, you are so painful. Phone this morning. Can we do a bit? Can we do a bit? I said, look, we'll do it next week for Leeds. No, mate. She said, get, get half hour, get half hour. So I thought, yeah, look, later on I've got meetings all day. Pick up the phone, three missed calls. Ed, just tell me he's five okay, Ed. Then you phone me and I go, sorry mate, I've been in meetings all day. Where are you? I'm outside. I mean, to be honest, you should actually, like, I, I was, in, I was in, within my rights to just phone the old Bill and say there's a geezer here. He's, he, I don't know, I can't get rid of him. He's sitting outside my office and he refuses to go away until he gets 30 minutes with me. You've got to appreciate the hustle though. Yeah, I do you? appreciate the hustle and actually that's why I'm, I've actually said go on and hurry up and do it. So you're here, you've got your meat for 30 minutes, let me have it. Let's roll. Right, um, next week, huge card. Yes. Actually, a lot of people that usually slag your shows off for excited about this card. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you about boxing fans is, yes, they give me a lot of stick, but when it's good, they say it's good. If you don't say Leeds is good, you're a liar. Because that card next weekend is the absolute nuts. Live on the zone, 20,000 people at Headingley. The rematch of Warrington against Lara. Katie Taylor for the undisputed lightweight titles against Jennifer Han, mandatory, former world champion. Connor Ben against Adrian Granados. Strafon against Maxi Hughes. Ebony Bridges. Hopi Price against Hussein in a really good fight. Jack Bates and others as well. Brilliant, brilliant card next Saturday. Is this harsh to call this a potential career end if he doesn't win for Warrington? Is that it's harsh? Always, it's always harsh to say that going into a fight, but I think I tweeted the other day saying something like, let's be honest, it's absolute must win, isn't it? I mean, in defeat, you know, they could have a brutal 12 round war that's a fight of the year contender, that's a split decision. I'm sure Josh would fight again. But, you know, if he, if he got beaten, in the same way as last time, that would be a, a, a very harsh defeat. This is the kind of fight that I love because everything's on the line. Everything. I mean, you're going to be literally biting your fingernails for the whole fight. Because you know with Josh Warrington, <laughs> Josh is going to have to box to instructions and it's going to have to be the, the perfect fight for Josh. But he always trades up. He's got fast hands. He's extremely excited. And... It's going, to be, it's going to be a brilliant fight, a brilliant fight. But I'm 100% behind Josh and I believe he's going to do the business. And I believe it'll go down as a great win. And uh, I think he's got massive bollocks, to be quite frankly, to be quite frank, for going straight back in. And I think he should also be applauded for that. Because I said to him, Steve Wood said to him, look, could just have, you know, could have a 10 rounder and then we could look at the Lara fight after that. I have to win this fight. I have to win this fight. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it is must win, it's absolute must win. Mm. I, I agree with that, the, the pressure of, especially in front of his home fans, yeah, the crowds are back. Jesus yeah. Christ, fair that's play. But, but that's what makes it a great fight. That's what makes it such a big event. That's what makes it so exciting. We care, he cares, it's, everything's on the line. Mm. So, yeah, very nervous about that fight because I want him to win so bad. Very interesting fight on the card between Maxi Hughes Great fight, yeah. and Strathon because we saw obviously what Strathon did to James Tennyson, absolutely blitzed him in, in one round. Maxi Hughes, very underrated. Cinderella story. Yeah, really. on a bit of a purple patch at the moment, so can he continue? Purple patch? Yeah. That's a term, mate. A purple patch is a bad patch. No, it's not. Is it not? No. Oh dear. Anyway. Sure? <laughs> yes. If he's having a purple patch, it means he's, he's having a good really? spell. Yes. Hmm, I look like a bit of a knob there, didn't I? Well, I could do by the time this goes out. I don't know, but I'm pretty certain I'm <laughs> Okay, right yeah. Come to think of it, I think you're right. So, yeah, just in case, yeah, he's having a bit of a purple patch at the moment. Um, so, 
I think when you talk about Strathon, and, and there's a feature we did on Match and Boxing YouTube, you can subscribe actually, if you're watching this, um, where Maxi Hughes says, I think Tennyson had a bit of an off night that night. Um, Fair we, comment. Yeah, we yep. don't know how good, like Lara certainly came with more credentials than Strathon, but again, Lara, Warrington was a huge favourite in that fight, that first fight. So was Tennyson. And he just traded up, he got careless and reckless, and he got hurt and he never recovered. Strathon can punch very hard, and he's full of confidence. But Maxi Hughes is on a purple patch. <laughs> he's, he's on a purple patch, he's so purple. Um, he's on a great run, great run. He's full of confidence, IBO title on the line, um, and a chance to get a small piece of that 135 pound division. Um, he sold a load of tickets. It's a great fight. Another, another 50-50 fight. Conor Ben, obviously, mm. after the, the drama and the trauma of missing out on the first yeah. week of fight camp, uh, does finally have his fight with Granados. And I suppose with Conor, he'll be just chomping at the bit. That is the term. Yeah, chomping, oh, at, the bit. chomping at the bit. Yeah, it's just not to get in there and do a job on Granados. He is, and it was so frustrating. I mean, July 31st, five weeks it'll be by the time he gets in the ring and it went so quickly because I remember him calling me after he tested positive saying, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Luckily for Connor, he literally had two days where he wasn't 100%. He was able to recover quickly. Tony just took his time, as did Connor, did the sparring, did the rounds. And when he returned to crushing it in the gym, um, they knew that September 4th was the date and it's gonna be a really good fight. Granados is very tough, he's coming to win. And Connor's looking fantastic in the gym, just tapering down now. And uh, looking forward to getting up to the lead. It's a great, fight camp was great, 250 people, but to see Connor fight in front of 20,000 people, that's what he's all about. And I think you're gonna get a great performance. I would assume if he comes through Granados that his next opponent is of a similar level to the Formellas, the no, no. I mean, Samuel the, Vargas is for me. Like, Granados is a step up yeah. from Formella and from Vargas, but Vargas was a step up from Formella, and he iced Vargas in a round. So everything is dependent on your performance in that specific fight. So if he beats Granados comfortably, we've got to be looking at. I don't know. I mean, for me, I love the Adrian Broner fight. And I've, I've Difficult spoke, to make that though? I don't, I think it's a massive fight. You know, I've spoken to Louis de Cubis at PBC. I've talked numbers with him, it weren't enough for him. But we'll keep going. Connor Ben against Adrian Broner. You know, whether that's December, whether that's early next year, these are the kind of fights. But just listen now, keep your eyes focused. Don't, and Connor's good at this, don't let people blow smoke up your arse and like, you'll you, you get beat. And Connor's focused on Granados. This is all that matters next week in Leeds. Do a job on Granados. Then we'll start talking about what's next. But, you know, the future is, is amazing for Connor. And he's a, people, people love him. People love to watch him. He's very exciting. And he's a good, good young man. You know, he's a great father. He's a great husband. And he lives boxing lives boxing and he's a winner. Katie Taylor. Yes. What's the what's the next well, at the big moment, fight for her? Obviously she's got a job to do. Yeah, she's next got week. to go through and box off a couple of mandatories, of which Jennifer Han is one. Yes. IBF mandatory, former world champion, good fighter. I want you know, I mean the Serrano fight is still the fight. The she's fighting fight. this week. She fights on the Jake Paul card, yes. yes. And that's the fight. You know, we're talking to uh, Lou DiBella, we're talking to Madison Square Garden. I think that's the biggest fight in women's boxing. And, you know, we've had our backs and forwards, but spoke to Lou and I think everyone feels that as long as the deal's right, that fight can happen. And I'd love to make that happen. Um, again, beat Jennifer Han, possibly run out in December. And then I see sort of March, April time at, at Madison Square Garden, Taylor against Serrano. Okay, moving on from next week. It's going to be double lively, mm -hmm. as Johnny Fisher would say in Leeds next week. But you've just announced the uh, AJ Usyk. 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 Yeah. That's 
normally say it right. Usyk undercard. Mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence Akali defending his uh, world title. Mm -hmm. Florian Marco against Prodan. Campbell Hatton on the bill and Callum mm -hmm. Smith's yeah. light heavyweight debut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah good card. Lennon Castillo. Yeah, Lawrence has to fight. You know, won that vacant title. Has a mandatory with the WBO, which is Prasovic. I think he's twenty odd or no. Uh, unbeaten. Um, Callum Smith back at 175 pounds. Can't wait to see him back uh, in that weight class. Training with Buddy McGirt over there in America. Um, Castillo's a good fighter. Just come off a good win. Gave Bivo a decent fight over 12 rounds. It's a, it's a tough fight to move in to move into 175 pounds against Marku Prodan's an absolute banger. Obviously, we lost that from Fight Camp. It's a big fight on the week two card. Uh, now goes at Tottenham, uh, Campbell Hatton, and another two fights, I think, still to be announced. Um, so, yeah, um, AJ will be probably around 10 p.m. ring walk, so it'll be reasonably early, and I believe the broadcast will start at 7 p.m., so you've got what, five fights, and then Anthony Joshua. I'm assuming the pay-per-view price will be 19.95, or not 24.99? That'll be, this, as you know, what price was put Right, should remember. £24.95. Yeah. So that's. We're assuming to be, all right, £24.99. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I was thinking about pay per view price? You know, the pay per view price in America when it's like $70, 70, bucks, 70 $80. Dollars. And considering we had Pacquiao and Ugas the other day mm. and just on normal Sky Sports, which is good. Um, I don't think you get any stick really, but anyway. Well, I don't really do pay per view anymore, do I? No, AJ, I isn't it? I, I feel that, you know, with our move to design, Obviously, we're not under the pressure to do those pay-per-view nights where people give me untold stick for. So, which is that's quite nice. Pay-per-view will always exist for the right fights. AJ is a standout pay-per-view star. You know, that's that fight's going to do over a million buyers. It's a massive fight, um, but it is nice to do a show like Leeds, you know, or other other fights that we've got planned, particularly for November and December, which would be pay-per-view nights on Sky and you won't have to pay the pay-per-view prices, they'll be part of your subscription. So it's, it's quite a refreshing change to the format, but I will never say, oh, pay-per-view's dead, because it's not. There will be fights, like Usyk Joshua, that is, of course, a pay-per-view attraction. You think this clears a million buyers? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So did Joshua Ruiz, too. So did, obviously, Joshua Klitschko. So did Joshua Parker. You know, Povetkin, nearly. Pulev, not far off. This is a much bigger fight than Povetkin and Pulev. This is, I mean, we saw it from the ticket demo. Insane. It's a massive fight. So, yeah. Um, intriguing, obviously, that having kind of part of ways with Sky, you know, obviously working back with Sky for mm. this fight, but I'm assuming everyone's just professional and gets on with it. Yeah, I was, with, I was at the um, uh, promo the other day. Saw Mr. Smith. Good to catch up with those guys. They've got, there's no, there's no beef. As the, you know, you you'll probably title this video "Earn Beef with Sky." <laughs> Don't do that, by the way. but you know, we we work with Sky across many of our sports, so we have a very strong relationship with them. It was just the deal that was right for what I felt was right for the sport and our business and our fighters and fans. So, and it's been great so far. Obviously, we just we've only done fight camp, but production, the energy, great, and now we move into an incredible show in Leeds, incredible show in Liverpool. And you're going to love what's coming in November and December as well. So I think it's going to be great value for fight fans. Um, when is the price increase expected to happen with design? Um, a question for them. Um, I'm sure there'll be an announcement in due course. Of course, it is expected. Um, and yeah, that'll be announced in due course. I told you before, I don't own design. I'm not spoken for design. I know I'm aware of the price point, which I think is fantastic for fight fans. And I'm sure there'll be an announcement in due course. Would it be after Leeds, though? Oh, yeah. Question for yeah. them. Question for Mr. Markowski. Exactly. Okay. Um, did you watch Manny Pacquiao? No. I, you know what I've done? I, I went to bed, and I was going to tweet just before I went to bed, Ugas is going to win. And I was really convinced that I, just over the last two or three days, I thought... I don't know, just think Ugas will win this on points. And then woke up and Ugas won on points and I didn't tweet it. Um, it, was, um, it wasn't sad to see, but it was obviously 
when you think what a legend Manny Pacquiao is, I mean, was an eight division world champion from mini flyweight, coming up to over 150 pounds at times. Um, just he's just not the same fighter. And in a way, I'm glad that he didn't fight Errol Spence because I think he might have got hurt in that fight or stopped in that fight. Because Errol was a bit um, more brutal than who guess. Also, very difficult with a week to go, switching up from Errol Spence to Ugas. You know, Errol Spence is southpaw, Ugas orthodox. And I know it's easier to switch that way if, you're, if you've got a replacement, but still, like, tough to do. But I think he probably felt that I've done camp. This is probably my last fight. So I think that would be his lot. Do you Great think, guy. Has he made some comments that he may rematch him? Yeah, maybe. I'd, I'd not, I wouldn't like to see it. You could tell he's not the fighter he once was. It's just, but some of his best wins have been during this era where he's not the fighter he was. I mean, a Keith Furman win will go down and should go down as a great victory because he's not, even in that fight, he wasn't in his prime. But it's just probably one fight too many. And obviously the delay as well. You know, with older fighters being out of the ring for two years, a year and a half, it's tough on them. Hmm. Um, you met up with Amir Khan yes. recently. We saw a picture that went on social media. Um, any revealings from this conversation? Well, I think I've said it before in an interview. You know, they're basically just going around trying to get as much money as they can from everyone and then they'll make a decision on what to do. Um, for me, I want to do Amir Khan against Conor Ben. But I want to do. I think it's a, I think it's a tremendous fight. What did he say when you when you talk about that fight? Um, I don't know. Probably a little bit take it. Like I think, I think, in they never really. You know, the idea of the Kell Brook fight for Amir a couple of years ago wasn't as appealing. But I think now it's like they're both kind of just not agreed, but it's just fact, isn't it? They just want one more fight and just want to make as much money as they can, and then retire. Whereas you've got guys like Connor that of course want money, but they also want to go in and face the best. And these kids are dangerous. You know, Connor Ben, Virgil Ortiz, Jerron Ennis, you know, these young worldweights. These are these are dangerous guys. And I think I think it's a fight that just suits Kel and Amir now. Whereas it never really suited both people. So um, yeah, I mean I've made, you know, I'll say that it's not the fight it once was, but it's still a fight that some people would like to see, and if it's available at the right price, we'd, we'd look at it. Okay. Do you see that fight, whether it's on kind of your affiliated platform mm. or wherever, do you see it still happening this year? Uh, it's, that's a question for them. I mean, I don't, neither of them are in shape at the moment, and we're coming up to September. I mean, neither of them are in proper shape. So it could happen in December, I suppose, but I, I think when it comes down to it, I would expect it probably to happen in January or February. I think that would be a better time for the guys, but, you know, maybe they want their money. Have you met with Kel Brooks since you no, saw him? No, no, I've spoken to his dad and met Kel here, so I've had a few words with me, but... No. Okay. Um, Got your notes there? Got your no, notes. just yeah, a few notes, yeah. Um, Canelo yes. and Plant. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we saw kind of a semi announcement yeah. of a fight, but obviously no broadcaster attacked. Mm -hmm. So, where's your standing in with this? Um, just working with Canelo Promotions. So, um, the deal was done with Eddie Reynoso and uh, Al Heyman for the fight to take place on PBC. Um, I'm working with Canelo Promotions. I'm not involved in the promotion of the fight. I'm not. A co promoter in the fight, uh, I'm just working on the Canelo team. So I think if I was, maybe the deal wouldn't have got done because you know I'm not probably not flavour of the month with certain people and I let them get on with it. It was the fight Canelo needs, it was the fight that they wanted. Eddie Reynoso done a great job. I'm very honoured to be just a part of that process. I've promoted his last three fights. I won't be promoting this show, but I'm on the team and hopefully be diving around in the ring when he becomes undisputed champion, taking all the credit. So, so when you when you say you're not kind of involved as such, mm -hmm. what 
Like, what are you doing then? Like, I'll be involved in the Canelo side. I'll be representing him and Eddie. You know, whether that's across the media, whether that's in the promotion and work for Canelo Promotions, who are the uh, um, co-promoter of the event. And I'll be there to make sure that everything's in order and that he goes and does the business. Low key on this one. There's no way that fight week passes where you're going to be low key. Oh, no, I want, you know, I want, I'm there to help them look, out, I want to look after them. I want to see him win. And, you know, he made that clear that I was on the team. It's an honour, not sounding cheesy, but it is an honour working with Canelo and Eddie Reynoso. And I think that I don't think, oh, there's a good chance the fight might not have got made if I was leading those negotiations, quite frankly. That's being really honest. So therefore, they've done it in the right way. You know, I, I doubt Al Heyman wanted to negotiate with me. So he negotiated with Eddie Reynoso. Eddie done a brilliant job. They've got the fight. That's the most important thing to them. We take this fight, we win this fight, and then we move on. Okay. Will you have any interest in watching Jake Paul and Tyrone Woodley this week? No, but I will wake up and be not excited to check, but I will be. Yeah, I, I want to know what happens in that fight. I read some comments. I wouldn't sit up. Is it Sunday? Sunday. Yeah. What time is it? It's in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, but maybe so. it might be a bit earlier. I don't know. Maybe. I wouldn't. I, I definitely wouldn't watch that fight at three or four o'clock Monday morning. But I would definitely wake up and go. Oh, I wonder who won that fight last night. Yeah. And then I'd, you'd see the knockout, wouldn't you? You'd just watch it. So, I saw some comments that you made about this whole kind of... Oh, oh. Yeah, but it's unbelievable. I say something in an interview and people make stories out of it. Hearn walks away from YouTube boxing. I said, no, I just said, I wouldn't really do it. I wouldn't do it. No, I don't really, didn't really... It was a bit cringe. That's what I said. It fucking was. It was, a, it was an amazing event. It was a great experience, but I couldn't do that all the time. Not Maybe. all the time, but... I don't... I think... Like, unless we say... And I'm not one... I'm not standing up and saying, Oh, YouTube boxing, we've got to stop it. I don't mind Jake Paul against Tyrone Woodley. I like Jake Paul. I think he's putting the work in. But if we don't focus on the boxing side, then this will become more of a normality every single week. So I'm going to just stay on that side and work towards making great fights for the sport of boxing or trying to making great cards and that fight. I don't say I will never ever promote a YouTube event again because I probably will and then you'll play this back. But I have no intention at the moment to be involved with a YouTube fight or particularly a Legends fight. You don't agree with that card? Which one? The one Triller are doing. You must, come on. I, slightly, must have slight interest I have in got what? no interest in watching that fight. Don't get me wrong, when you send me the clips in the morning or someone posts it, yeah, I'll, you know, but I don't, it doesn't appeal to me. And I saw, I didn't see David Hayes' comments about my comments, because you trying to get a bit of beef going there. Don't I didn't interview David Hayes. David Hayes responds to Eddie yeah. Ernest. What did he say? I don't actually know, I haven't seen it. Really? It was, uh, I, I haven't watched it before, but he's probably saying, buy me. He likes a few quid, I don't know, like, he's done one. But David Hay against Joe Fournier, I, I applauded it. I said it was, fuck, like if Floyd and Logan was a bank job, this one is on another level. So well done Dave and well done Joe for getting your money. Just make sure you get it. But yeah, I, it's just it's bizarre. Oscar, I don't like watching Oscar for the high fight now. He's a, he's a 50 year old man or whatever he is. He was one of the greatest fighters of all time. I don't want to see him fight now. Because all it does is, basically means that they didn't look after their money right or make the right money and they fought. Because any fighter that made the right money don't want to go back and earn more, like do that. They don't. It's not the same for everyone though, is it? Some people might just still have a burning desire to... Mate, what? cut the bullshit. Do you think Oscar De La Hoya is doing it because he has a burning desire to get back in the ring? Come on. <laughs> Do you, think, do you think Dave's fighting Joe Fournier because there's a burning desire to get back in the ring? Yeah, but they've got money, haven't they? No, but people want more money. Of course, of course. Sometimes you don't know the background of what people have done with their money. So, yeah, anyway, it's fine. It's not, it's not hurting anyone, is it? 
Um, well, maybe. But, yeah. It's not. Give me, like, Jake Paul against Woodley. Much better than Oscar De La Hoya against... Vito Belfort. and David Hager. Like, Jake genuinely puts the work in. Tyrone Woodley is a like he's not long retired, is he from the UFC? He's not a striker, but he's better than Ben Askren. He's still he, a Jake Paul wins easy, but he's more competitive. Okay, um, October thirtieth. Any updates? Um, oh, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. Working towards Dylan. I've got to call them after this actually. Um, just trying to finalise an opponent, really, and then we're ready to go. Got the undercard. Me pad. Can we have a look? I can make some noises to aggravate everyone. I don't think. Who's it out of the opponents? Can you give us a short list? Um, Chris Ariola. Okay. Um, Jermaine Franklin. So the names that have been mentioned yeah. prior. Charles Martin. Yeah. Um, a few others. Who could feature on that undercard? Could give us a little inkling. Chantel Cameron, yep. unifying the division. Felix Cash. Savage. Craig Richards. Rob Football. Mm, another one more big fight. O2? Yes. Oh, yes. Bring on the O2. Everybody. We're back, baby. Um, a lot of people I spoke to. Another question. No, just people in general. A lot of, not to say a lot of people, but no, it's... Well, you don't really speak to a lot of people, do you? No, no, of course I don't. <coughs> um, believe that... Usyk wins. Um, I'm sure a lot of people do. It's a very, very, very tough fight. So in terms of kind of going into fights before, you obviously nervous wreck, blah, 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 mm. whenever AJ you make fights. Spoke to him the other day? I was with him on Sunday. You was, yeah. Spoke to him today. Good. Uh, but this one, I don't know, there's something... So, mate, it's two Olympic gold medalists. Mm. It's the unified heavyweight world champion against the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world who is on the pound for pound list. It's a proper fight. So... Am I nervous? Yeah, but I'm excited because I know how good AJ is and I know these are the kind of fights that he can prove that he's the best heavyweight in the world. And he is the best heavyweight in the world. And that's why I believe he'll win the fight. I think it'll be tough, I think it'll be tricky, but I think, I believe he wins. But what a great fight. If you can't get up for nights like this, you should pack it in, mate. The heavyweight world championship at Tottenham Hotspur, that great club. No, the ground is quite I've got good. to say, the ground is unbelievable. Yeah. I went there for the first time on Sunday. Stunning, stunning ground. It'll be a night to remember. Have you, if you're planning kind of Joshua's immediate future, have you, what are you doing at the minute with this whole Fury stuff? Are you like, no, no talks, not speaking There's to no anyone, not doing they, anything they, until after? They never wanted to talk about it in the first place, really. And... They've not wanted to talk about it since. Have you tried? No. Because... <laughs> that's, that's, that's no, but, but, but it's not... Why, why do I always have to do everything? So for the first fight, I pushed every day. I negotiated a deal. No one else did anything. I've done it all. Now it's like, well, I don't know, well have, you been, have you approached them? So they can reach out to us, but I don't... They've got enough on their plate. They've got a fight on October the 9th. I don't think it'll happen. Yeah, but you said this about the first fight. What, that I was right about, yeah? I just said the last time that fight won't happen, it didn't happen. No, the first fight you said you was convinced that it wouldn't happen. Yeah, all right, so I'm one from two. <laughs> I'm having a perfect patch. But do you, right, if, if someone said to you, and you probably won't answer this because you're a pansy, right? But if someone said to you, are you, 100% sure 
that Fury Wilder would happen on October night? What would you say? I'd say I was not be, be no, honest. Be, like, be, you, I know you won't be honest. Yeah. Be a little bit honest. Because the first fight, which was meant to happen on July 24th, fell through, you have to say that you wouldn't say 100%. No, okay, fair enough. But you could say that about literally anything, couldn't you? Not How, really. Well, you can. All right, okay. So, if I said to you, which fight is more likely to happen? Oh, oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, mate, yeah. Well, Jesus Christ, mate, yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Well, I think the fight does take place. Okay. And we'll, we'll have this discussion after. I generally think on the 9th this happens. Okay. You have doubts. Mm. Yeah, it's six weeks away, isn't it? Seven weeks. October 9th, same, same night as your card in Liverpool. Correct. One's sold out, one's definitely won. Okay. So, just finishing off what you're saying, basically it shouldn't be all left to you is what you're saying, yeah? It shouldn't be, but we're not interested in talking about that fight. Business to take care of September 25th. Monster show, the whole world watching. An unbelievable fight between two great heavyweights. Let's see that unfold first. Should have got somewhere bigger though. Yeah, we could have gone to Wembley, but it's a great, great stadium. Great stadium. Mm. Could have sold 200,000 tickets. Easy. Really? 100%. 200,000? 200, there was 54,000 people in the queue trying to buy tickets online. Okay, well listen, I appreciate your time as always, Edward. I appreciate it. I feel you. like I've really worked for this interview today, don't I? Like? <laughs> to get to this point here, Mrs. is waiting outside the car. Is, is she? Yeah. It's 10 to 6 as well, I've got to go. Um, we will see you in Leeds. Look forward to it. Have you got any closing words? Um, yes, I have actually. Yeah. I would like to say, whatever you do, tune in for Fight Week and the show next Saturday in Leeds. I know you love great nights. And I know, to be fair to you, whatever you think of me, when I put a cracker on, you love it. And you're going to love next Saturday in Leeds, live and exclusively on design. Thank you.